Why did you decide to be so frank and open? Because it's a very honest portrayal of your life to now, isn't it? Yeah, well, it, it's taken me six years to agree to do my autobiography. I just didn't feel that I had enough experience. And um, I, when I sorted everything out, you know, the, the divorce and the company and everything else, I just thought that it was the right time to do it and the right time to try and inspire um, startups and um, people going through the same uh, trials and tribulations that I went through. Um, because you were an amazingly why. successful businesswoman. You could have written just a business book, but you've, you've been very brave, I have to say, and very frank about all sorts of things to do with your personal life, your upbringing, your, your issues with maybe OCD and, and weight, and your issues, of course, with your ex-husband. Mm -hmm. You've aired everything in public. Why have you done that? Um, for one reason only, I'm all or nothing. And I thought, well, if I do this book and I'll only do it on business, then, you know, it's, it's no, I'm not giving it my all. And, you know, your personal life really, um, it's all intertwined, you know, with, with business and it's your weight and your fitness. And I just felt that everything um, was linked to one another. And it was my way of, of trying to say, look, this is business life. This is it. I, I put everything on the table and this is how you can deal with it. And this is how you can get on with it in my experience. And I'm sure it um, makes people relate to you an awful lot more. Um, so let's go back to the beginning because you write a lot about mm. your childhood, a loving yeah. family and a, and a fantastic community. But it was a struggle, wasn't it? I mean, you, you talk about not having very much money, having to work very hard with your mum and dad. Is that what's driven you on that that start in life, do you think? Um, well, who knows? But, you know, I, yeah, I grew up in the, the east end of Glasgow. Incredible, incredible people. But you know, it was a very working class background. Um, I didn't even have a bath until I was 12. I used to get washed, of course, but... It was once a week, wasn't it? I read in your book, you used to go yeah, down to the local the, bath. This, this is incredible. Local swimming pool, um, but, but baths in the swimming pool. But, you know, I just had this sheer determination and can-do attitude. My brother, unfortunately, died when I was, I was young, and um, I decided to start a paper round at business when I was 10. By the time I was 11, I had, you know, several teenagers working for me. Um, and I was, I suppose I was an absolute write-off before I even started out in life. And that's what I want in this book, my fight to the top, um, to try and do is to encourage the youngsters coming up that, you know, please do well at school. But if you don't manage to do well, if you come from a deprived area, if you'd not come from money, then, you know, it doesn't mean to say that you cannot try your best and have that fire in your belly and can do attitude and determination. And you've made it. You've made more money than you could ever, ever hope to have, I suppose. Do you still have that drive? Do you still wake up with that hunger? Um, yes, I do. Every, every morning I wake up, I have that fear of failure. I and get about four hours fear? sleep a night. But that's so interesting because is it because you fear you may lose it all and kind of go back to where you came from? Is that what's driving you? Um, yeah, just I never ever want to fail. You know, it's hard getting to the top, but I think it's even harder staying at the top. When I was in New York um, a few months ago speaking, there was a lady in the audience that said, when was the moment that you knew you had made it? And I said, well, I, I don't feel I've made it yet. And, you know, that's my passion now is, is touring the world, speaking. And, and I'm not a coach and I'm not a professional speaker, but um, I am highly in demand now, which I, I can't believe it, but um, I just tell my story and I try and help people and try and inspire them as much as I can. And if this book doesn't inspire people, then I don't know what else. I don't know what <laughs> will. So it certainly inspired me. I mean, a, a big chunk of the book has to, be, we have to talk about this, is related to your relationship with your now ex-husband, Michael, who was a very big part of your life for a long time. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it became um, very acrimonious. Why did yeah. you feel you had to go into so, so much details about that breakup? Um, well, I would have loved to have left him out of the book, but unfortunately, you know, when you spend 22 years of your life with someone, I met him when I was 17, um, you can't leave that out of the book because there were several things that happened in our relationship um, that really did affect the business. And we worked together, and um, I want it to be a book of loads and loads of things on weight and fitness and children and how you can get that work-life balance, but also how you can work with your partner if you are doing it, um, which is mm. set some ground rules. You know, don't talk about calling the bank the bank on a Friday night when you're lying in bed together and all these different things that have an impact. So I had to, if I was going to do it again, you know, I would still do would it. Because you? you write about an incident particularly on an aeroplane, an incident when you kind of alleged she was having an affair and you, you kind of 
beat up his, his beloved Porsche car. And he says that's all a work of fiction. So what do you say to that? Um, well, you know, my, everything in here is, is, is the truth. And, you know, I have lawyers if anyone wants to contact my lawyers. But, um, you know, everything is in there. And it, there was a time um, we went through for about eight months where we did split up, but, you know, he wouldn't move out the house, etc. So it was like War of the Roses. And I do absolutely regret, regret some of the things that I did, but I suppose I was doing it through hurt. And in my book as well, I, I do expose all of that about damaging his car and doing other things, which I, I actually I do regret. Um, but there's no point in being bitter. There's of no course. point in being jealous. And there's no point in holding any grudges. You've just got to dust yourself down get yourself back up again. You only live once and, you know, every day now I've stopped drinking and I wake up and I smile and yeah. I really enjoy all the businesses I'm starting. And, and, and you look fantastic as well. You look, you're a very happy lady. Um, what advice would you give then to, I know you're mentoring entrepreneurs who are watching tonight. Yeah. They want to do what you've done. How do they do it? Um, well, just have that sheer drive and determination and it's that idea and, and you know, do a solid business plan. But I think there's a real lack in the UK um, at the moment where, you know, the focus is all on startups. And that's amazing. That's really good. But it's helping these startup business get through the first um, six months and then the next year. And I really do believe that, you know, I wish I could mentor more people, but we need more mentors to help the up and coming businesses. They'd be lucky to have you looking after them. Michelle, it's been a pleasure to Thank meet you. you and the best of luck with your book, Michelle. Thanks, very much. Thanks so much for coming on.